In this video, I'm going to go over how you create a character like this and then be able to replicate it in different scenarios like this. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ben Silverman, and my focus is really helping creatives and creative businesses understand the new AI tools that are out there to give you superpowers. I download everything that I know into my AI toolbox, which is where I put all of my tools and news, as well as all of the workflows like these to help people understand how to use these new tools so they don't have to go down all of the rabbit holes that I did. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you find any of this helpful or useful, it would really help me out. Okay, so Midjourney has finally created a way for you to get consistent characters in your image generations, as well as style transfers, so you can keep a similar look throughout your entire project. There have been workarounds to do this for a while, but ultimately it is going to become so much easier to start creating fluid stories, or if you're in filmmaking, a more consistent narrative. If you're in advertising, this can be used to put the same person in different scenarios. In filmmaking, imagine using these tools to help you create storyboards. I'm not saying that traditional storyboard artists shouldn't be used for big projects, but not everyone has access to them. And it doesn't mean that those people shouldn't be able to get storyboards as well. Let me walk you through how to use this new feature. And I will also talk to you about different ways you might use it in different aspects of different production workflows. Now, I've been creating all of my new workflows in this application called Milano. I will leave a link to Milanote in the description of the video, as well as a link to my AI toolbox where I will be putting all of these workflows in the future. If you take a look right here, this is the AI toolbox right here in production tools and resources. I, I go ahead and I list everything that there is and I will put more and more in here as the time goes on. Uh, this is the one I have done on my consistent characters. This is the workflow that I have done on my ultimate content creation workflow and it's all gonna be in here for you. All right, so now if we jump into Milanote, this is exactly how I operate my Milanote. I have my AI content workflow, which is what I just did a video on recently. If you look in here, you'll see my entire content creation workflow uh, with all the different AI tools, but I'm gonna hop in here to my mid-journey workflows. And here is where I'm gonna be talking about consistent characters. It is a great tool for creating different workflows and being able to showcase them. All right, so this is exactly how I started it. I'm really making videos for people who haven't done it before. If you have a thousand pictures or more that you've created on Midjourney, you have access to their website. Now I'm gonna be taking you through what it's like going through Discord, okay? Because most of the people who I think need to know how to, how to work these tools have never done it before and they're not gonna have access to the website. So I wanna try and keep it uh, as you do, then I will move over and I will show you uh, how to access different ways of creating these images and animations. But right now I'm gonna keep it to where uh, most people are going to be accessing them. So uh, right here is in Milanote, and this is what I have created for you. So this is what you're gonna be able to come into my uh, AI workflow in the AI toolbox and see. But this is basically what I'm gonna take you through right now. Okay, let's hop into mid-journey and I'm gonna show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. All right, this is mid-journey. Now what I'm trying to do is very simple. I just wanna create an image for you and I wanna be able to take that image and use it in different ways, right? I've already done it, now I'm gonna just take you through my, my methodology and then you're gonna be able to do it on your own. You can go and visit the AI toolbox and just go step by step in exactly how I created it. All right, so when you come into Midjourney, I went ahead and used a prompt that generated these four images. A man in his 30s with curly black hair and glasses and a beard looking at camera, 3D animation style, Pixar style with a plaid shirt, okay? And that's pretty simple. Before you do any type of a prompt, you just do imagine. And just remember, it is $30 a month to access Midjourney. And the, this is not a free tool, but I really do believe it's one of the best. Okay, so after that, it created these four images. And these four images, are, you can decide which one you like. You know, they are very specific. I personally like this one. And now uh, I just wanna take you through step by step. If you go on the top left hand corner, this is one. Top right is two. Bottom left is three. 
and bottom right is four. U stands for upscale, V stands for versioning. If you want to create a different version, then you are going to click on V, one, two, three, or four of the one that you want. Then you're gonna decide, oh, I'm gonna do a different one of that, but I wanna add this, or I want no glasses, or I want it to be a black shirt, or whatever it is that you wanna change. And then it'll give you four different images to choose from. But I went ahead and clicked this, and I upscaled that one. So I put U4, so upscale four, and it, then it gave me this image. I like this image a lot. So it's a man in his 30s with curly black hair and glasses and a beard looking at camera. It upscaled. Now, if I wanted to, I could zoom it out. I could, I could vary a little region of it. I can upscale a subtle bit, very subtle bit, custom zoom. There's so many different ways you can pan to the left, pan to the right, increase what you see in the image. But right now, all I'm going to do is I want to demonstrate the consistent character feature. And to get the consistent character, the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to right click and then if you look down here, it says copy link. You could copy image, but that's not what you wanna do. It's not gonna give you the result you want. You're gonna copy link and you're gonna use that later. So once you copy the link, you are going to create a new prompt with that link. Now, there are a few details that you should know. So the, the parameters that are important is before you use a parameter, it's dash, dash, and then the parameter. And that's gonna be C-R-E-F which is character reference. That's what it stands for. And then after you do that, there's gonna be a space, and then you're gonna paste the link that we just copied, and that is going to be the reference that you're going to use to get the, the image that you want to put in a different area or in a different scenario. And then after that, you're gonna use another parameter. It'll be dash, dash, and then it'll be C, W. And that stands for character weight. Now, after that, you're gonna put space, and you can pick a number between zero and 100. 100, keeping it very close, if not exact, to what it is that you put in. And zero is going to give it the ability to do what it wants creatively with it. So then you can go ahead and play around with that, but that is the most important thing to know, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing for style. So it's S ref, which stands for style reference and that's dash dash s ref and then you're going to paste the link of the style that you want it to output as well as s w which is style weight which is the same thing that you did before okay in the first images that i'm going to show you i did not use a style reference so i did not transfer the style so i did an animated man in his car annoyed as he is stuck in traffic and then I put an animated man and I put dash dash C ref and then I pasted that link that we copied. So right here, you see that link is where I pasted it and I made it exactly as I wanted it, right? So it gave me these four images back and I actually like them a lot. I did like the style. If I was looking at it now, I really am digging this one and I could go back and do that later, but uh, I'm gonna do it with a style and that's what I did next. I then did the same thing I did an animated man sits in his car annoyed as he is stuck in traffic C ref CW and then S ref and then I pasted the link to that same image and then SW and I put 90 giving it a little bit of leeway and then it gave me back these. So that's pretty cool, right? So I, I really actually really really like that. And then um, I went ahead and I upscaled this image right here. That is that is it. That, is all you have to do and um, you can do it again. Now if you go back to where I am giving away my workflow you'll see I showed you exactly that you can go right to it. You put you generate your own image on this side or pull in your own and then you have it right here it goes walks you through with clicking the link and then putting in the text seeing the image how to choose the image and then what it is that you create. That simple. I am going to show you how to do set dressing, okay? It's a very similar thing. So what I did here instead is in this workflow, I generated an initial image of furniture, okay? I started by clicking imagine, and then I hit enter, and then I used a green love seat. It gave me back these four. And then in the, I have uh, examples of what it is to look for, uh, for U and V as well, just so you remember if it's the first time that you're doing this. So I upscaled this green, 
uh, this green chair, this love seat, and then I generated, I talked about generating the image that you wanted to put the location in, and you'll see right here, it gives me four New York City lofts. I upscaled the one that I like, so there it is. Now what I did is I did a variation of this, right? And then I used the link and CREF to put that in. So I said variation of this, and I said a green love seat sits in this uh, apartment. Uh, in New York City Loft. And then I used CREF, pasted the link, CW, I kept it 100. And then right here, I showed you that I, I married these two together. And then this is what I got back. I got the green love seat sitting in that apartment. Now, all of this to say is, again, it's very simple. You just have to toy with it. What you're gonna be able to do is for presentations or for storyboards, you can generate a storyboard and then transfer the style if you wanted a specific style. You can do whatever it is you want. Then you can start getting into animation. I'll do animation workflows as well, but it's just really important that you learn how to prompt for images. And then even though there are programs like Sora coming out, it's not gonna be out for a while. So you really should get good at figuring out how to get what it is that you want. And that's where the creativity comes from, right? Yes, they can generate these images that you're thinking of. Yes, you can color correct. Yes, you can make it more photo real. Yes, you can make it stylized, but it's really about your creativity. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with, please. Like, subscribe, send me links. I want to just stay in touch with all of you. And then I really want to see what you create because of this. Uh, check out the AI toolbox and then you'll be able to just have access to all of the stuff there. So thanks and I'll talk to you soon.